Hi and welcome to my channel, Bookworm. I'm all about books. In today's post I would like to introduce you to a young adult book by Jennifer L. Armentrout and it's called If There's No Tomorrow. First I talk about the facts, then I introduce you to the author, make a short summary and in the end I offer you my conclusion. Please notice that I'm not an expert, this is my personal opinion about the content and I'm well aware that everyone experiences a story differently and that's fine. That's what makes books so extraordinary. So if you have already read the book, I'm curious about your opinion, then please leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. So let's start with the facts. If There's No Tomorrow by Jennifer L. Armentrout. It's a love story with inclusion of realistic problems of everyday life. The target audience are girls 13 plus. The book was published 2017 by Harlequin Teen Publishing. The reading time is approximately 8 hours and it's clear that it varies from reader to reader. As comparison title I'd list Furious Thing by Jenny Downham. Let's move on and I would like to introduce you the author. Jennifer L. Armentrout was born 1980. Exactly, those were the times. <laughs> she was born in 1980 in Martinsburg in West Virginia. She started to write her first short stories in high school mainly because she was bored in algebra class, which I can completely relate to. <laughs> Luckily she didn't feel like doing math, otherwise we might not know about her books in the young adult section in the area of science fiction, fantasy, romance, contemporary romance, and many more. One of her recent novels, Obsidian, is to be made into a movie. She also writes realistic and paranormal novels for young adults under the pseudonym J. Lynn and many of her books have made the New York Times bestseller list. Today she lives in Charleston and spends her time with surprise, surprise, reading and watching really bad zombie splatter movies. We have something in common there. Then she likes to pretend like she's writing and spending her time with her husband and their border jack Apollo. They seem to have a little farm because they have alpacas, geese and fluffy sheep. In 2015 she was diagnosed with retinitis pigmentosa which touched me deeply. You see it's a rare hereditary and progressive eye disease specific of the retina where the photoreceptor cells they die which leads to tunnel vision and ultimately blindness. There is no cure for this disease. That's why Jennifer wants to write as much and as long as she can and I hope for her that it's going to be this way. So let's go to the synopsis. The story is about Lena, a 17 year old girl at the start of her senior year. She is rather quiet but nevertheless not a loner. She loves to read books, mainly fantasy and romantic books. She likes to watch true crime posts and she plays volleyball with one of her best friends. She has three best friends and one best friend. His name is Sebastian. He is her neighbor and they know each other since first grade and Lena is truly and madly and deeply in love with him. 
Therefore, it's no surprise that 99% of her thoughts revolve around him and she's preoccupied with the question whether they could become lovers one day. The fact that he broke up with his beautiful and popular girlfriend doesn't make her particularly sad because now she reckons she has a better chance with him. So after a few frustrating attempts, she finally confesses her love to him. And it's still uncertain whether he loves her too. If you don't want to know the details, jump forward to the time I noted. Then fate strikes hard and mercilessly. Lena gets in the car of a drunken friend and a terrible accident occurs. And within seconds, nothing is like before because Lena wakes up from a coma and has to find out that everyone else in the car died. Now Lena has to fight her way back into life and learn to deal with her feelings of guilt I will come to this later and explain. And then there's Sebastian. Now let's move on to the interpretation. The story is about carelessness, wrong decisions and their consequences. Mistakes made for various reasons such as the urge to belong, not wanting to be the spoil sport, fear of rejection, fear of saying the wrong things. It's about loss and coping with grief, guilt and survival guilt. And how surreal it is when you have a loss to cope with and the world keeps turning around like nothing happened when for you from one second to the other nothing is the same anymore. And in this story we talk about the big topic driving under the influence of alcohol. Then I think the author wants to tell us that we are more than our faults and we must not let our life be dictated by one wrong and in this case fatal decision and that it's worth accepting help and talking about your worries. In this story I noticed Lena's speechlessness I'd like to give her a push so many times and it's almost like in those movies where the main character always stands in her own way. That's the moment when I stop watching the film or I switch channel. And not to put anything off, especially not feelings, because nothing can be taken granted, especially not life. It can be over in just a snap just like this and I found the author made a quite unusual yet apt comparison that life is more fragile than a cell phone display. The author also addresses social media and that there are certain people who carelessly leave their sometimes shockingly spiteful and hateful remarks on social media platforms forgetting that this is about real people and their story, people who have feelings like everyone and can be heard by such comments, not to forget from strangers. So let's move on to the assessment. It reads easily and fluidly and since it's written in the first person, it creates more closeness to Lena. But I have to admit I found the beginning lengthy with tedious and superficial description of the characters and their daily life instead of just letting them live through their action. However, this brings me straight to the dialogues which I find stilted and quite often meaningless. And there's a lot of repetition, for example, landscape description or the appearance of characters and the beginning shows a very cliched portrayal of teenagers. On one side we have the girls who only gossip about boys, clothes and the next party and on the other side we have the boys who only talk about football, cars and parties. It may be that the author did this deliberately 
to make the tragic break more dramatic in the story but it was definitely too long. The whole first third, this is too long. I really had to force myself to keep reading and just because I knew that there's going to be a twist, it was hinted at the beginning, I kept reading. The beginning was rather shallow, but from the drama on there was a deeper examination of life and the story turned to more serious themes. Here the love story is pushed somewhat into the background but without distracting the story at all. On the contrary. From here on Lena has to face her feelings of guilt and the question why she gave in to the peer pressure. Could she have prevented the accident by driving herself because she hadn't been drunk? So let's move on to my conclusion. I like the book much better from the second half on and I think it's great how the author was able to weave such serious topics with a love story and that she dared to do so. In this respect I was glad to have read the story to the end. So my final conclusion, this book is definitely not for adult readers. It is a book for teenage girls who like to read about love and real life problems. So we've reached the end and if you liked my post please leave me a like and subscribe to my channel and thank you for watching my video. See you in the next one. Have a good time and bye bye.